If you want to prove something like this, you can simply apply the notion of reordered arrays. But just add uh, one more thing to the notion of reordered arrays. There is what's known as the fundamental theorem of reordered arrays. This is uh, uh, Lou Shapiro's theorem. But it's a very simple uh, theorem to prove. You consider uh, two generating functions, A and B, okay, or two formal power series, A and B, okay? And you take any reordered array and you multiply that by the uh, entries of the formal power series A and you set that equal to the entries of the formal power series B. In this situation, Lou Shapiro showed that B of T is always related to the uh, generators of the reordered array and this particular formal power series by this. It's a very simple uh, computational thing. All you have to do is just multiply and rearrange terms and you get that. Okay? Now, uh, let's see uh, if we can form now a new reordered array where the numbers in the k's column, of course k starting from 0 again, to be the numbers of the class of lengths to n with k hills. Now we are about to form an infinite lower triangular matrix that will serve our purpose here. Okay? So dnk here is, uh, so it, this particular matrix is obtained by simply taking the case column to be the number of paths of lengths, uh, 2n with k hills. For example, this first one is dig passes with no hills. And this one is dig passes with one hill and so on. Okay? We line them up that way, and now uh, if d equals r d of t h of t, then uh, d of t is the generating function for the number of dig passes with no hills, which I have already described here. That has to match. Now, it's also not difficult to see that the generating function for the number of dig paths with just one hill, k equals 1, okay? So, uh, here is a typical, let's say the hill is here, just one hill. So, you have your dig paths here. Okay, so that's counted by d of t, and you have another dig pass here that's counted by d of t, and this is just counted by t. So the generating function for uh, the uh, dig passes with exactly one hill is simply the product of d of t, t, and d of t. That's what I'm trying to describe here, t times d of t squared. Okay? So hence, uh, from this relationship, we can easily get, we got d of t, th of t over here in the first column, setting the two equal to each other, we see that in this particular case, h of t will be the same as d of t. And therefore, this particular reordered array has this description. The d and the h are equal in this case. Okay? And now, uh, it's also not difficult to apply that decomposition that I did for no hills, one hill, two hills, and so on. And we know that the dig paths are counted by the Catalan numbers. And setting that equal to each other, we see that uh, d of t over 1 minus t, d of t is the same as the Kaplan number state. Now, since every dig pass has some number of hills, see, 0, it, it may have no hill, it may have 1 hill, 2 hills, 3 hills, 4 hills, and so on, multiplying this particular reordered array by this particular sequence, this represents no hill, 1 hill, 2 hills, 3 hills, and so on, we obtain this result over here. Now, my claim here is this particular column is the total number of hills among all big passes. Okay? And all I need now is to obtain the generating function for this, applying the fundamental theorem of reordered arrays. Okay? So uh, doing that, uh, if I denote the uh, generating function for that right-hand column by h of t, applying my uh, fundamental theorem of reordered arrays, I get this relationship which uh, boils down to t times uh, c of t squared here, because this d of t over 1 minus d of t, we showed it to be the Catalan number. And uh, there is also a well-known relationship for Catalan numbers, you all know. Other than this, uh, it satisfies this functional equation c of t equals 1 plus t times c of t squared. So from that, we notice that this t times c of t squared is simply c of t minus 1, and uh, replacing that, we obtain the fact this, remember that this is the total number of hills among all the paths of lengths to n. If generating function turned out to be just the Kaplan number with the trivial case removed. That means uh, the total number of hills is given by the Kaplan numbers except when n equals 0 because of that minus 1. And the average number of hills as uh, expected is going to be equal to 1. Okay? 
Uh, we can also apply this uh, to the so-called uh, diagonal augmented lattice paths. Uh, these are um, lattice paths from 0, 0 to an end uh, with not only the north and east step, but also uh, northeast step. Okay? So in this case, uh, each pass uh, on this diagonal augmented uh, lattice can intersect the lattice as few as two times. Look, this is a typical example where uh, the intersection with the diagonal occurs only at the beginning end, at the end. That is as few as two times. And it may also intersect as many as n plus one times. That means the path is always along the diagonal in this case. So these are the two extreme cases. Now we want to know the average number of points on the diagonal. We know that it's going to be, the minimum is 2 and the maximum is n plus 1. What's the average number of points on the diagonal, for example, among the so-called uh, diagonal augmented lattice paths? Okay? So these kind of uh, questions can also be answered by looking at the corresponding reordered array. In this case, you consider DNAK to be uh, the number of diagonal augmented lattice from 0, 0 to NN with K points on the diagonal. And that would be the typical reordered array uh, with this kind of definition. And uh, using uh, the same kind of description that I did before, it's not difficult to see, look, D of T in this case is 1. And looking at this one, uh, it's not difficult to see that H of T is 1 plus C of T. This 2, you can write it as 1 plus 1. The rest of it is a Catalan number. And so that reordered array, which represents everything that I said here, is given by uh, the reordered array uh, with d of t equals 1 and h of t equals 1 plus c of t. And now we're going to apply to this, uh, like before, the fundamental theorem of reordered array. In this case now, uh, we're going to have one point along the diagonal, two points along the diagonal, three points, four points, and so on. And this product over here, we are getting the total number of points along the diagonal. And now, uh, here, this A of t is 1 over 1 minus t squared, the generating function for this trivial sequence here. And applying our FTRA again, uh, we see that B of t, the total number of points along the diagonal, has a generating function C of t to the power of 4. And now we can simply answer the question by taking the ratio of the total number of points along the diagonal divided by the total number of uh, diagonal augmented lattice, and it turns out to be this nice rational function in n. And notice that that average number goes to 8 as n goes to infinity. That means in the long run, the average number of points along your diagonal is about 8. Okay? And uh, I'll leave it uh, for you as an exercise to also think about uh, the number of diagonal steps. The number of diagonal steps among all possible passes. And I'll, give, I'll even give you the answer. It will come out to be 2n over n plus 3. This time around, instead of counting uh, points along the diagonal, we are counting along diagonal augmented lattice passes. We are counting the uh, diagonal steps. And the average number in that case is 2n over n plus 3. And in the long run, you will have only two diagonal steps among all of them. And it can be verified very easily. And if you're a scoop, this is the reordered array that will give you the answer. Okay, so now uh, we talked a lot about uh, how these reordered arrays are going to be applied in different settings. Now let's put everything together. We can, in fact, uh, extend the previous definition of the matrix product. Remember when I uh, talked about the Lagrangian merging formula? I was multiplying two matrices together. You can actually generalize that multiplication and define uh, a a binary operation on the set of reordered arrays uh, in this way. This is just matrix multiplication. And it's easy to see that the identity element obviously is the one that corresponds to d of t equals 1 and h of t equals 1. And the inverse for any typical element of the reordered array is given in this way. And here is a little bit encrypted. Notice that t equals y times h of t to the power of negative 1 uh, is an equation that satisfies the Lagrange emergent formula. And therefore, it can be uniquely solved if the reordered array that we use here is a proper reordered array. That's why I defined proper reordered arrays before. So if you want to introduce a group structure on reordered arrays, they better be proper reordered arrays. Otherwise, this thing will not produce inverse. 
So it's a collection of proper real data arrays with this multiplication operation that gives you the group structure. Okay? And now uh, here are some uh, examples of uh, subgroups. Uh, the, this one is called the Appel subgroup. If you let x of t to be 1, we get the so-called the Appel subgroup. If you let the d of t to be 1, we get the so-called the Lagrange subgroup. Of course, this is the Lagrange subgroup where d of t equal to 1. And if you let d and t, d and x to be equal, as the examples that I used uh, previously in solving some problems, then we have the so-called the Bell subgroup. Okay. And it's not without reason I'm describing these uh, three uh, subgroups. They do play an important role in solving many combinatorial problems. For example, uh, here is um, an example of uh, the Bell subgroup, okay? uh, where d of t and h of t are both the Catalan generating function. Okay? Here is an example of the Appel subgroup where d of t is the third power of the Catalan generating function. And here is an example of the Lagrange subgroup where h of t is 1 plus c of t. Uh, I already moved uh, to these two examples, but I gave three examples altogether, right? For now, ignore the first example and just look at these two. Can you find anything common between these two examples? They come from two different subgroups, one from the Appel subgroup, the other from the Lagrange subgroup. There's actually one that I displayed before as well. This one. This is the Bell subgroup. Do you see anything common among these three? Look at their row sums. Are they the same? They are, right? Row sums. And both of them are the same. This example also. Look at the row sum. Does it match with the previous two? OK. So here is uh, Lou Shapiro's claim. He actually claims that these three elements are unique elements in their respective subgroups with this particular property of having a row sum that is described by c of t to the power of 2. He did provide a proof of his claim, but if you want to work on it, uh, I am more than happy to share these examples with you. He claims that these three are unique elements in their respective subgroups with this kind of row sum. It's just a claim. If you prove it, then please let me know. So it's a conjecture? Yeah, it is a conjecture. Oh. Uh, I didn't speak to him recently, so he might have provided it. No, claim so far as I know. He knows how to prove it, but he didn't bother to tell us. Probably. Yeah. Well, but we can try. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, just very quickly, uh, uh, a semi-direct uh, uh, product decomposition of uh, the elements of the reordered array. If you take any element of the reordered array, you can actually describe it as a product of uh, the Appel and uh, Lagrange subgroup. This is an element of Appel. And this is just a basic product. Okay. Uh, why is this important? For example, look at this. Uh, uh, Manhattan Hatsilaris, this is what uh, Lou Shapiro calls, okay? So you start from 0, 0, and you are going to an N. In addition to the north and east step, you are also allowed to take this diagonal step. That's why he calls it the Manhattan Hatsilaris. For example, there are 11 ways for you to go from 0, 0 to whatever, 2, 2 there, okay? So now, uh, in here, this is the reordered array that corresponds to uh, the uh, Manhattan taxi lattice. You take either the upper half of the Manhattan taxi lattice or the lower half in order to get that reordered array. And this is its decomposition into Appel and uh, uh, Lagrange subgroup. Okay? Now, in this decomposition, it's very easy to get H of t from here, which is going to be C of t. This is just the Catalan sequence. And it's also not so difficult to simply look at uh, the diagonal of the Manhattan taxi lattice and obtain uh, its the d of t to be that. So from the original uh, Manhattan taxi lattice, it's not easy to get the d of t and h of t. But once you write its decomposition, it becomes very easy for you to get uh, the two formal power series that actually define uh, your reordered array. Okay? Uh, there is a similar uh, decomposition into uh, the Appel and uh, Bell subgroup as well. And it's not difficult to verify that. 
you can describe every element of uh, a proper reordered array not only as a product of appell and uh, elements of appell and the grand subgroup. You can also write them as a product of the element of the appell subgroup and the bell subgroup in this fashion. Okay. Uh, for example, applying this to the Manhattan taxi lattice again, this is the reordered array, and then it can be decomposed into this two. Okay. We already obtained the D of T and H of T for the Manhattan lattice, but Look at this uh, first column here in the decomposition. This is an entirely new sequence. We have not seen this uh, in the Manhattan taxi lattice. And you might say, OK, how does, for example, this particular sequence relate to the Manhattan taxi lattice? Can you see how it is related? Look back at the actual Manhattan taxi lattice real array. How is it related to this one? Do you see any relationship? Uh, add them up diagonally. Look, 1, 1, you get 2. Ignore this one. That's just extremely. 1, 1, you get 2. 3, 4, you get 7. 11, 16, you get 27, and so on. So by doing this decomposition, you have obtained uh, a hidden property of the Manhattan taxi lattice um, uh, that, you know, that you can describe over here. Okay? Now the question is, does this thing generalize to all semi-direct decompositions of reordered arrays into a pair in the pair subgroup? At this point, I do not know the answer to this. In the case of the Manhattan taxi lattice, if you take these diagonal sums, it corresponds to this. Whether or not this always works for all the cases of the decomposition of a reordered array into uh, the Appel and Bell subgroup uh, needs some justification. Okay? Uh, these are just some uh, sample applications and uses of uh, the reordered arrays, uh, particularly it its group properties, and how we can take advantage of some of uh, well-known results from group theory in order to answer uh, combinatorial problems uh, requires uh, a lot of investigation. And uh, if you are interested in this, uh, here are some uh, relevant references. Uh, my talk pretty much was uh, based on this original paper by uh, Shapiro and et al. And then uh, the lecture that Shapiro gave uh, at the Center for Combinatorics in China. Uh, and uh, also, uh, this particular manual, I have it here. Uh, this manual, An Introduction to Mathematical Methods in Combinatorics by uh, Sprignoli from uh, Italy. Uh, and the rest of them are just uh, supporting materials and so on. This last paper, I think it already came out uh, recently in the linear algebra and its applications, has a lot more identities uh, that are induced uh, by uh, reordered arrays. And if you are really interested uh, to uh, use reordered arrays more effectively, uh, in addition to just looking at the partial sum theorem and uh, using that in order to prove identities, you will actually obtain a three term recurrence relation for the entries of reordered arrays from this paper, which can prove even more harder identities like the Van der Mond identity and so on and so on. And I strongly recommend that uh, you look at these if you are interested in this kind of thing. That's all I have. And thank, thank you very much. much. I'm to answer questions in private. <laughs>